Business Brain, episode 447 for Wednesday, May 10th, 2023. (music) Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take different things in life and we put them through the business brain to see what kind of perspective we can get, see what lessons we can learn. Sponsors for this episode include Headspace, where you can go to headspace.com slash brain60 and try Headspace free for 60 days. And a new one for us, found.com slash brain, which is business banking that tracks your expenses and actually helps you to find write-offs and they'll even carve out some savings so that you know how much to pay in taxes. It's a cool kind of all-in-one thing for entrepreneurs. We'll talk more in depth about each of those shortly here but for now here in durham new hampshire i'm dave hamilton and here in lafayette california i am shannon jean how are you man i'm good i'm good yeah it's uh it's been a it's been an interesting week as always especially with trying to like navigate through whatever this weird economic scenario that we're heading into that we're probably going to be in for the next year to two years at least. I right? guess. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I, no nobody one knows. knows. I don't think that. Yeah. No. Well, it's, there is no historical precedent to look at for where we are here. That's the, that's kind of the problem, right? Is you can't yeah. say that, well, here's what happens when you have a rocking economy right, right. and then a, and then a pandemic lockdown with more government, assistance than we've ever seen. And then, you know, you come out of this in a economy that's not so rocking, but people have more cash than they've ever had and lower credit card debt. It's like, what is it's weird. It's weird. We don't, yeah, we can't, we can't predict. So it's interesting. And and I think that, yeah, it's that volatility Uh uh, and and uncertainty that is just, you know, like I keep waiting for the other shooter drop, you know, I follow the problem. Everybody is. Yeah. Yes. No one knows. No one knows no, if there but, even is another shoe. That's the thing, right? So, yeah, and and I think inflation is still just rocketing along. Out of you know, mm-hmm. yeah, you may hear indicators or whatever, but if you go to the grocery store or you go out for dinner, it's like holy smokes, man! This I don't know, but the amazing. price the price of eggs, which was you know a bellwether, yeah. right? I just happened to notice <laughs> yeah. the other day we were at this store with my son, and he's like. The eggs are only $1.79 a dozen. I was like, oh, wait, what? Down. This is Trader Joe's. Yeah. Like, we should be overpaying here. What's going on? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so it's like, oh, I don't even know anymore. I don't even know. The price, it is weird. price of oil is going up, which is usually a good thing for the economy. Like, I don't know. It's like crazy. Anyway, it is interesting. We'll have to see how it comes. I think something is going to happen, but I, I don't know whether it's going to be in the fall or early next year. As, yeah. as, um, and I think, I think the commercial, real estate space is going to be the driver of it this time because so much um a good example is you know a, a large building in san francisco that well had been yeah for sale i don't know 160 million dollars and this kind of thing and i think it just closed last week at 60 million yeah and yeah but san francisco it, it, is not indicative of the whole country like correct it, in correct. that it's it's sort of an a an, a a a characterization of the like it is. it's 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 overstated and and in both directions like when the economy was rocking it was overstated yeah. in the other direction right so it's but those like, are kind of indicators oh right? it's an indicator I mean, yeah 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 so i would yeah. say wow if if a if this commercial and and the the problem is that building is empty Right. right. It's well, not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody's nobody's coming back to these commer- many of these. Not, commercial not yet. Spaces, but I think so. I think you'll see, you know, give it 10 years and people will start yeah. to kind of it, San Francisco will redefine itself. Uh, of course. Uh, as it always, it always yeah, has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most things do. Yeah. Most things do. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, it yeah. is. Yeah. It's fascinating. And I wonder, I mean, if we if 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 we have any listeners out there, which I'm sure we do in the commercial real estate space, you know, what are you seeing? Is it. uh are the occupancy, you know, what are the rates of, and what are the numbers looking like oh, yeah. um, to, to really get a sense? I would love to get some feedback uh, and, you know, email us at feedback at businessbrain.show because it'd be, I, I think it'd be great to, to dive into this more, not only because I want to buy another commercial building <laughs> somewhere <laughs> yes. and, and I want to get educated along the way, um, but 
I'm just curious to see what's going on in different parts of the country. Cause I, like I said, I'm out here in near San Francisco and I get all this blowback from this crazy. Yeah. You have a crazy thing city. there. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 That city yeah, was it, it sort is. Of overstated in both directions. Yep. Yes. Yep. So help educate us and then we'll share it with everybody else and uh, we'll do a show about it. I think that'd be terrific. I think so. Uh, you want to, you want to tease up what we're, uh, yes. what you brought to me today for us to talk about here? Yes. I, I came across, uh, I'm on Twitter a lot following business folks and, uh, uh, Jesse Puji came up with this concept that he's sharing, uh, called sentence stems. And, you know, his context is all about how it works, how they work in a sales presentation type thing. Huh. But I think it's much broader than that. And I'd, I'd love to dive into it and uh, talk about how you can use it in your sales organization and other aspects of your business. All right, business brain listeners, you know that your brain power is best spent on running your business, right? Not on the annoying details of saving receipts, calculating your taxes and categorizing expenses. What if there was something that could take care of all of that for you and free up more of your time? Well, there is, and it's our sponsor called Found. Found is a business banking app built specifically for the self-employed. It's all-in-one banking, meaning it comes with the smart tools you need to run your business, manage your income, expenses, taxes, and invoicing all from the Found app. Even sign up is easy. It's free and it takes just minutes. Plus, if you spend $100 with your Found card within the first 30 days, you'll get a $25 bonus in your account. There's no commitment. Try Found today and see what a difference it can make. Head to found.com slash brain or use promo code brain to try found today. Terms and conditions apply. And of course, found is a financial technology company, not a bank. Found's banking services are provided by Piermont Bank, member FDIC. Remember, head to found.com slash brain or use promo code brain to try found today. And our thanks to found for doing what they do and for sponsoring this episode. One thing we talk about often here on the show is maintaining our mental health, right? Because, listen, if our brains aren't healthy, then they can't be our best business brains and we can't apply them to things and get that perspective. And our sponsor, Headspace, can help immensely with this. Headspace helps improve mental well-being through guided meditations, mindfulness practices, breathing and calming exercises, and so much more. These tools can help reduce stress, boost your mood, and help you sleep better. Headspace is fantastic. I use it regularly here. It really is nice to have someone guiding through those meditations, and Headspace provides that. It's really amazing. You've got to check it out. And they've got meditations for different times a day, but also just different lengths of time. So if you only have time for a few minutes, you can use one of their on-the-go meditations. It's amazing. You've got to check this out. And Headspace has helped me and more than 100 million people worldwide, and they can help you too. And listen up. You do not want to miss this. We've arranged something special. For a limited time, all of you can try Headspace free for 60 days by going to headspace.com slash brain60. That's brain60. You won't find this offer anywhere else. You've got to use our link. H E A D S P A C E dot com slash brain sixty to unlock all of Headspace free for sixty days. This is not something they normally do. Headspace dot com slash brain sixty and our thanks to Headspace for sponsoring this episode. All right, so you found this tweet from Jesse Puji, which we'll link in the show notes here at businessbrain.show, uh, about these sentence stems, which he says are the right with with the right starter stems you yeah. can train yourself and your team to demo anything and make it imp- informative interesting yet brief and then he shares some of his favorites uh and i think with these uh, you start thinking this way there'll be more that are specific to you i call them magic exactly. phrases right like the things that yeah. you're like oh if i say this i know it's going to lead to a great you know it's going to solve a thing so, yeah, and it's almost it's you could also think of it as a template, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. whenever we've talked about customer service, we've talked about templating and systemizing your responses. So they're not 
uh, individual. Every time somebody gets a different customer service person, they have yeah. a different response. It's the same thing. Every time your your salespeople go out, it shouldn't be a unique experience. They should be, you know, using best practices and and selling this, uh, you know, selling your product in, in the way that you want and the way that you you guys have found to be successful. It works. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let, let's go over some of these. Um, you know, he starts this conversation in the sales, you know, demo with uh, a STEM, like the vision for this product or the problem we want to solve for this, you know, that this product, uh, let me rephrase that, the problem this product solves, whether it's a service product, that kind of thing. Um, and then he explains it. What you see here is X. When you're you're doing your demo, you're telling people what they're looking at. Uh, and then he jumps in briefly to hit on how this works, explaining how your product works, how it solves that problem again. Uh, you can talk a little bit, you know, he's talking about doing some backend uh, sharing of how the technology works or how your systems and process works. And then he jumps into what he calls the most important part of any demo is an example or a story where your product or service was used and how it solved that problem. So and it I needs like, to be specific. I right? like this because what he's doing is the is classic storytelling in a sense by saying, here's what we set out to do, right? Setting you up it with a you know, painting the the picture and then yeah. showing that they did it. Right. So Correct. you're already ex you're anticipating the outcome as the listener to this, as the audience for this. You're anticipating the outcome and then they're showing you, yeah, we did it. We did it. We did it. And and really, that's all we're saying. It's all he's saying in several different ways and from different angles is here's what we set out to do. And here's how we did it. Here's another way we did it. Here's another way we did it. You know, yeah, different ways right. to, to convince you that, yes, they are what they say they are. They're doing what they say they can do I, like that. It's a great way to build trust in general but also specifically for the product. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think that uh, something important to point out too, is if you don't have, if you're a new business and you don't have a great story to sell and maybe you don't want to embellish or make something up, w what if you use the product yourself? Well, you know, this eat your own dog food type thing. Mm. Uh, what if you're using the product to solve a problem in your own business and you can use that story. So you can get creative on how you present this stuff. If you don't have a, you know, a, a ton of backend stuff and that could, that could help your credibility as well. Yeah. Um, he then jumps into talking about uh, the, the, what makes the product or service unique and different. Uh, you want them to be able to remember, you know, as you're leaving a meeting, you get off a call and then they have to go describe what they just talked to you about. So you want to make sure that they, uh, they can remember what it is that, that was different. Um, and then he's saying, you know, one of the things that most people forget is, is to talk about why it's so important, why the technology matters, why the sure. process matters, why your technicians are the best, why your service is the quickest, whatever it is. Um, and what that impact is going to have on your customer. They're going to save money. They're going to have faster response time, less downtime, whatever it is. Um, I think that's great. And then uh, yeah. he kind of wraps it, he, he wraps it up with talking about here's what's next for the product or service. We're going to add this. We're adding new employees to even do better. We're, we're building this feature into the product. Um, it, it's a nice way to systemize the way you're, you're speaking about your product your product and service. Yeah, I would I would be careful of that last one. And again, you're going to tailor fit all of these to your business product service. If you are selling something that is that, that does not evolve once the customer has it. Like if you're selling software like a, a, a software or a service, telling them what's coming next is great. If yep. you're selling them something that they're going to buy it and then the next customer is going to get the what's next, well, then you don't want to do that because then you just told them to wait, right? So be yeah, careful don't oversell that. it. Yeah, yeah don't yeah. oversell the future. Yeah, yep. but but showing them, oh, you know, here's and here's what we're doing with the company, uh, it, you know, and even saying, oh, and we've recently added more text and we're able to do this or that, like just showing them that you're a, 
some demonstration that the company is not stagnant, that the company is evolving, that's good, but you don't want to be careful not to communicate. So you should wait and do business right. with us right. later. You know, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Don't buy this model year. Wait for next. Right. Wait for next <laughs> you know, year. Kind of Unless thing. that's what you want yeah. them to do, in which case this is a great way to do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's good. And I think, as I said in the beginning of the show, um, this concept can be molded into different aspects of your yeah. organization, especially customer service. I, I love this template idea, sentence stems. Uh, if, you know, if you're doing your customer service via the phone, you know, some of this stuff is scripted to where they're using certain phrases, but you're giving uh, your customer service reps, obviously some room to maneuver. So it's not just all, well, this is our policy, which is a nightmare. No. And, um, and, and sort of, Making it your business culture to find these magic phrases, the things, the stems that he's calling them, right? The, the, the ideas, the things you say that lead a customer down a certain path or, or end a certain path with a customer, right? If you're dealing with a problem where somebody is upset about something, if you find the magic phrase that, that ends that, make it a culture, part of your company culture to highlight those and save those and systematize those because yeah. when, you know, when your rep stumbles into one of those, which will happen, right? You know, everybody's going to ve veer off the script at times. And when they realize, Oh wow, this just solved the problem. This is one of those magic phrases. I get to go put this magic phrase in the book, right? You know, and other yeah, people can terrific. use it really focus on your magic phrases. It, it can make a huge difference. When we were, running uh, computer nerds, which is a business we had down in Texas. It was pre geek squad, right? Going around to people's homes and offices and fixing things. We were obsessed with magic phrases and it really helped us because it, you know, every person, every one of our nerds was out essentially alone in the field, right? We rarely right. worked yeah. as a team, but we got together as a team on a regular basis and sharing those magic phrases really helped bring the company together and give us a, a singular uh, brand, if you will. And it, it yeah, really that, helps. That I was going to yeah. ask, so how, how do you share, you know, being cognizant of making sure everybody comes back and shares those magic phrases, sentence stems that they had success with and, and or failures them. with too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, don't ever say this. Don't right? say, here's I mean, what I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How come you didn't get that? Job? You almost need, you know, that data needs to be downloaded in some central repository, yeah. you have a meeting we, or whatever we, it is. We stored um, it you know. in a in a file on our server. Now, this is, you know, back in the early days of the Internet. So it wasn't like we had Google Docs and all of them, like shared notes and things like that. But we, we did have a shared document on our Novell Netware server that was nice. full of magic phrases that everybody had access to. And everybody would, would literally print it out and keep it with them. And so you could sort of review it. But it was a doc. It was a living document, even though people had printouts. You know, it was it was something where we talked about it at meetings. You know, we had a weekly staff meeting where everybody got together for sixty minutes or whatever, and we would, you know, and then we'd go out to eat or whatever, and um, and we would we would talk about those things pretty regularly. So again, it's just part of the culture. So yeah, no, I love it. It's great, and yeah. you know, if if you've had success uh, doing this stuff with your business, let, share it here so we can share it with the the rest of our listeners. Feedback at businessbrain.show feedback at businessbrain.show i believe is what mr shannon gene said yes thanks for hanging out with us folks thanks for sending in your feedback to feedback at businessbrain.show we definitely like to hear from you and if your email is featured in an episode you are entered to win a macbook air here in 2023 Make sure to check out our sponsors, headspace.com slash brain60 and found.com slash brain. And we'll uh, see you next time. Keep living that charm life. Hey, I have one more tip for you today before you go. If you want to learn about the most powerful customer service concept on the planet, the next podcast you listen to should be episode 118 of Business Brain, where we first introduce the concept of two tokens. Two tokens will turn your customer service department upside down and change how you solve problems. It's simple, easy to implement and teach, and it will thrill your customers. So have a listen. Search for the number 118 at businessbrain.show or click the link in the show notes of this week's episode. And cheers to your success.